Ruto has to fund is not free lunch. Access to loans. President launches much-awaited 50 billion shillings credit facility. That was one of his major campaign pledges in a bold move that could have considerable ramifications on his legacy with a warning that beneficiaries must repay. That's what we're focusing on and a raft of other issues here on Soconi, holding court today with Dr. Jim McPhee, who is a director of School of Accountancy, Strathmore University. Also, we have global leader of Kenya Diaspora Alliance, Dr. Shemo Chodo. We have Bunyasi Sakwa, who is an economist and politician as well, and Bilo Kero, who is a businessman and politician as well. So we were to circle back with you, Shem Ochoado, on this. And uh, we were pegging our thoughts also on the revolving fund. Suppose you don't pay, then what will happen to this fund? I think we need just to be a little more innovative and creative. Uh, I say this because um, I've, over the past three years, there's a fund that has been doing rounds in Africa six countries started in Cameroon, mm -hmm. Ghana, and got into Kenya about a year ago. I think the government stands complimented in that there must be a starting point. Not perfect, but can be improved on. And I think rather than reinvent the wheel, can look around what are some of the working systems, mm -hmm. funds. Mm -hmm. This particular fund, for example, is a gr business grant matching, leveraging diaspora remittances, which we all agree is the major inflow for Africa now, mm -hmm. not just Kenya. If we leverage it, this particular fund, how it operates is one identifies a relative kith or kin or, uh, or, or a member of the, a relative or an associate in one, initially it's in seven EU countries. And then once that's identified, you find somebody that you want to support. Not giving handouts, not giving fish, mm -hmm. but giving away. So that the main goal is, and I think our mopping the hustler fund obviously is clear on what the goal is. In this, the case of this fund is how do we inculcate the business culture? And in order to do that, of course, we must also introduce value systems. A major goal as Kenya Diaspora Alliance we put forward is trust. How do we restore trust? Trust deficit is a big problem. A number of diasporas in the past few months uh, in Europe, in the US that we've met, the first thing they tell you, let's not talk about investment. I mean, even before you talk about investment in Kenya, there is that huge de trust deficit. So inculcating a value system and also coaching this particular fund, how it operates is before money is given, of course, there's a fair amount of vetting and there are coaches recruited in different parts of Kenya. Uh, this is a GIZ German project, which we could learn from. It's not perfect, I must admit, but so far, very, very encouraging results. In fact, I've seen cases, even just in the past one year, people started Kinyozi very small, but after six months, they start bringing in equipment and you see the business going forward. And the goal, of course, is to convert them from micro to small enterprises. So the point is, the major part of it is coaching, the business coaching, so that money is not thrown at part. Before people are given money, they are coached and uh, visited. In fact, ultimately, the goal is to work with the Nyumbakumi leadership so that uh, when somebody says, I'm going to do this, have bought this, the aspect of accountability, and it's digitized. There's a fair amount of digital. Of course, one may say the rural communities uh, with Fuliza, with, um, with the Likamwizis don't have technical capacity, but there are avenues to help. So I wanted just to say, if we are very creative, and where, where is the creativity in this fund, we do Africa, I'm talking about. The creativity is you match it. It's like what former governor Kabogo tried in Kiambu. Mm -hmm. oh, shilingi kwa shilingi. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody maybe was doing, say, Mamamboga, was, was selling, say, paraffin, puts in 10,000 shillings. The minimum actually is uh, 30,000 shillings, around 250 euros, the minimum. But let me use 10,000 for argument's sake. Then the relative sends 10,000 shillings. Once GIZ sees 20,000 shillings, there's evidence. They double it. They send... Uh, 20,000 shillings. So it's 40,000 shillings the Mamamboga has. Buys paraffin. The business grows. If it was in Mitumba business selling, there's a time comes when the maximum given is at 2,500 2, euros. That is like 300,000 shillings. If they match it, you already have 600,000 shillings. This mama is like already a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Can easily go to Dubai and bring a bell. So this is business. If the focus is to promote entrepreneurship in a sustainable manner, then we could learn from that. The reason here being the diasporas out there who some we call donor stroke sponsor, 
um, is keen to see this business grow, not so much as an investment, but instead of every month sending $110 or $20, whatever it is, to the kith and kin, that you're giving business growth. I think that culture of entrepreneurship, if Hustler Fund can pick an idea from it, would go a long way. And as I said, it's already working in six African countries. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason why. I'm sure it will be improved through research and innovation. And this is where the experts we have in the room come in. Mm -hmm. So it's a, I in want to encourage them to look at widow.africa. That's the name even on the website. Study it, see what can we do. And I'm so happy that Kenyan researchers in Germany uh, professors and so on were involved economics professors in designing this program. Mm -hmm. I think um, it would go a long way, perhaps like, unlike other funds government has had before, which are like um, uh, donations, really. This one achieves two goals. One, you are supporting the very low mamambogas, but secondly, you are also inculcating that investment and business culture in them, and mm -hmm. savings culture. And saving culture. And supporting them along the way. The beauty is, the difference is that this is a business grant, so it's not repaid back. Mm -hmm. But uh, nothing stops us from doing one which is alone the same manner. Still, we, we are assuming that uh, everyone who is in diaspora also is doing well. And I was wondering, uh, do we have the diaspora aspect of it to, to this Hustle Fund? If I'm uh, away and I'm a Kenyan and I want to access Hustle Fund, have they really considered that? Uh, uh, I might be in Saudi Arabia, you know, you're stifled, you don't have your salary, and uh, maybe you want even maybe to do your developments here through the Hustle Fund. Uh, how then, what are the dynamics? I don't know. This is something that we it's need to consider. Pesa, wherever Mpesa works. Wherever Mpesa works. Yeah. Okay, ah, I, I get it, I get it, I get it. All right, uh, let's hear from... Uh, Bunyasi Sakwa, I was asking about the revolving fund around yes. it, and if you fail to pay, how does it affect also the dynamics of, uh, you know, the the accessment or yes. accessibility of Islam, sorry? Yeah, where, whenever you have a revolving fund, and of course there's no payment, uh, you reduce, you know, the size of the, uh, of what revolves. But um, as, as my colleagues here have actually pointed out, the losses in, in the revolving funds in those categories by percentage are small. There will be some. For sure, that will be sad. Like they are all at, that they are at all levels, and we like to quote cooperates also. You know, uh, with all of the expertise and capacity, they also still uh, are not able to see the light of day when we pump in money. You know, like in some of our big institutions we have mentioned over and over. But I think that the success of this program is going to lie in how much care is taken in as in the, as as they impl as begin implementation of it. As we go along, it will mutate in terms of goals. It will mutate in terms of scope. For sure, it will. Uh, so I think we should look carefully at it. And listening to um, uh, uh, what uh, uh, Shema just said, uh, I, what it, uh, in my view, it's important now at this point in Kenya to think to do a 360 degree preparation for what else is out there for this sector of people. Even countries like the U.S., uh, for which I can talk from first-hand experience, there are a lot of institutions, the NGO sector and some government, government that just specialize in providing information on what resources are available in your community. Uh, you may live in an area and you don't know that you can be supported. If you can mow, mow your loan, somebody can come and mow your loan freely, but you have to reach out to these small things like those, for example. If you cannot um, uh, manage to uh, take your children to school, other schools are generally free, but you have any problem coping there are those who can assist and so on so maybe now we are at a position a point in kenya where institutions specialize in understanding these and in providing additional information what else is out there so that people can pick and choose uh, but we shouldn't share away from assisting those who may not be wanting a business facility now they just want <coughs> a cash flow support to buy those success books to buy the day's food i get requests of if I just get 200 shillings, then I can go home. I'm still um, avoiding getting to the house because we didn't have money for, the, for dinner. It's that bad in the urban areas. It might be worse in the rural areas as well. Uh, land reform issues are going to, be, to come in handy. Uh, agricultural productivity is going to become very important, particularly for the small practitioners uh, out there. So these things will they'll grow and mutate, and I think it will fit in well. But I recall during the campaign, uh, the president was never, the, the candidate then, was never specific about loan or grant. Mm -hmm. He kept saying this money will be injected mm -hmm. in that uh, part of the pyramid. And indeed, that, that is being met, injecting it there. The terms now are, of course, uh, getting clearer 
and so on. It happens, we do the same when we are doing dowry. You get much more specific when they lay <laughs> sitting across. <laughs> you don't get your phone. Thank you. Uh, they used to say, now, if they say we want a plane, they say, don't panic. Yeah. Yes, yes. So we'll bring you a plane, but we'll, we'll, we'll bring in bits and pieces. First, we'll come with, uh, with the wheels. It, it, and this will take a longer time as well. It never ends. Yeah. So, yeah, it never ends. So, uh, over a period of time, then we'll have actually brought your, your plane at home. So, don't get uh, uh, panicking. Be careful. Just as you wind up on the Hustler Fund, uh, so I wanted just to get your comment moving forward. You, you're talking about the sustainability, sustainability of it. How will it also uh, benefit the consolidated fund? There seems to be such a disjuncture in, in terms of sustainability and the consolidation of this fund. Yeah, I, I think this is government fund, so it has to be appropriated by, uh, by, by parliament. It has to be budgeted for and appropriated by parliament. You, 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 in fact, even now, the, People have been asking where did they get the money because it's not yet been approved by Parliament, but I'm sure Treasury always uh, will regularize this probably later. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, so, so uh, sustainability, I think two things are important. One, that Parliament, you know, votes this 50 billion annually for this fund. It's critical. And, and second, that the, the, the fund itself continues to have the revolving fund and people pay back and, and, and you keep on lending so that it's ultimately what is lent out in a year is not actually 50 billion it could be a trillion even depending on how the turnover mm -hmm. of the of the of the of the facility um so so i i i think for the moment they have said you know they're giving up to 50,000 and it's for 14 days maximum uh, but i would imagine that's why you have a board there they'll have to be innovative in this kind of thing if they're not innovative you know then this they're competitors they have competitors very strong competitors um you know people would, would, would always want to uh, go to, to the others. Uh, so I think they need to come up with new ways of assisting. For example, the president did mention the other day when he was opening the uh, Twigger Foods um, facility that he would give, uh, you know, give Twitter Foods 300 million. Let them support their, let them give it to their customers so they can buy products. Small customers because they deal with the retail um, customers. So maybe there will be some many, uh, you know, similar uh, innovative ways of, 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 of handling these funds. Um, and, and I think then it will become more sustainable if, 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 if the, that innovativeness is brought into, into it. Because this is technology-based, it, 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 so it must be um, easy to come up with ways of making it more attractive. Um, and as for me, the main thing is the government needs to find a way of addressing the concerns for the businesses, the small businesses. Mm -hmm. Because this one is not about business, it's personal loans. But for the businesses, people who are running a small business, they want money to <coughs> enhance their business. They need to start business. They need to employ people. They can only expand. So I think we'll let's, let's wait and see what they'll come up with in February as pledged. Mm -hmm. and they'll have something for the small businesses. Yeah, I'm sure forward. this will have uh, made, or it has made uh, James Bray, the chair of M MCL, uh, <laughs> very happy. I think he was really uh, gagging for that uh, last week when we were speaking. Mm -hmm. But still, uh, the question I wanted also to pose to you is, uh, 14 days as a repayment period, isn't that uh, a, a very short time for you no, to actually... No, the average, you see when Fulis has started, it was for an average of 3 to 7 days. Maximum it is now is 14 days. So they've just used that, you know, 7 to 14 days of, yeah, the same time. Because the people who borrow mostly borrow for 7 to 14 days. Uh, nobody keeps 1,000 shillings for a year. Mm. I mean, you, you're borrowing, you want to pick something from from Okulima market and take it to South Sea to sell, so it's just for a couple of days and you return back that money and collect more again. It, that's, that's, that's the idea. So 14 days is, is good enough for this kind of, um, for this amount of money. That's the average they have seen uh, in, in, the, in the other similar digital credits. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. f uh, you don't think uh, maybe there should have been a grace period just to also to stimulate. <laughs> <coughs> and I think when a grace period for this, yeah. uh, repair and for a month, then now you revert back uh, just to see how, you know, to partner, mm -hmm. to see how, what is the reaction in the market. Yes. It's actually a month, isn't it? Uh, if you fail to pay, <coughs> you have one month yeah. after which you'll be blacklisted. Uh, you, in, in terms of your uh, credit uh, scores and but so forth. But of course you slapped with the interest. Uh, on yeah, that. Yes, but yes. then you still have a month before you're blacklisted. Before you're blacklisted. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you have one month period. Yeah. Uh, we just, we a very just quick one. I was just going to say, uh, success of revolving funds in principle uh, depend very much on the likelihood of getting the next facility. You know, you can pay and get it back. Um, if there is any uncertainty 
that you'd be able to, to draw down on the facility, people will hold back what they have got so they can do self-financing, mm -hmm. so to say. So there must be, continuity is going to be extremely important. Um, we have to calculate the cost of uh, uh, non-payments, uh, real economic costs. Uh, they, may be very, they might actually, the economic costs are even lower because uh, although you don't get back the money, maybe it has done something quite useful, but we must be able to give <coughs> some certainty in availability of these resources for them to, to, to revolve. The moment you indicate, even in the budget cycle, that this, will not, this year will not be approved, for example, and people know it won't be available, there's no need to pay back, but then, because you won't be able to get it back at all, uh, then it collapses. So that guarantee that's going to, mm. to run is mm. extremely important. Uh, mm. The guarantee, yeah. Uh, okay, let's hear from uh, Dr. McPhee. Well, I think one's got to keep in mind that the nature of the trade the person is involved in, because it used to be that people would borrow, let's say, 10,000 shillings at the beginning of the day. They would do their day trade, and then at the end of the day, they would repay that together with 50 shillings. And if you work that out, it actually works out at 253% interest for a day, mm -hmm. well, for a year. Now, <clears throat> but I think, you know, there are other businesses where you need the loan for a longer period of time. Yeah. And I think the point that you're making is, is one which is very valid. I think, you know, just simply laying down a 14-day period will mean that some people, you know, simply because, you know, trade actually is slower for them than the day. You know, there are people who can buy a whole lot of vegetables, okay, they buy them early in the morning mm -hmm. from Wakulima Market, they've sold them by the end of the day, they can repay the loan. Now, for those people, this is ideal. Mm. But, you know, there are people who are, they're going to buy a whole lot of goods with the, um, the, the money that they borrow. They may not be able to sell them within the 14 days. Mm -hmm. And in that case, you have a little bit of a problem. So, mind you, you see, that one of the problems here is that you've got to try to lay down a rule so that the whole thing can be digitized. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't have a person at the end of the line making a decision Ah, okay, in your case, we're going to give you the loan for 14 days, or in your case, well, you need the loan for three months. That cannot be done simply because you now have a robot at the end of the line, mm -hmm. which is, is going to work things out automatically. So it's, it's, it's a very difficult thing, okay? It's, you know, mind you, um, I think the point that, you know, uh, people are making here, I know a lady who runs her own, uh, you know, microfinance institution. And this woman has got the ability that when she lends only to women, mm -hmm. okay, so, mm -hmm. you know, I've never got a loan there, okay, right. but, but she has the ability, <coughs> when a person walks in her door, she will be able to judge immediately whether this lady is going to repay or not. And she, her repayment she's loss... She's very discerning. <laughs> is, well, yeah, ex she's got this gift. Mm -hmm. And in fact, she's married to a lecturer from the University of Nairobi. Uh -huh. When he saw the amount of money that she was making, he got a number of colleagues, they went on a retreat in Karen, they produced a document like this. And I remember us visiting the family once and the husband went upstairs. She said, you know, they, they produced this big document and you can see it there on the shelves, lying, du gathering dust. Mm -hmm. So he had this idea, he teaches business at the University of Nairobi. Well, we're, go we're going to show this, the people how to do this. Mm -hmm. But this woman had the ability to actually, you know, make that judgment and her, she she's got a, a fund of over a billion shillings now this woman is so successful but you know so here uh -huh. uh, you know rather than for for a lady rather than go to uh, this you know the, the 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 whole thing of the hustler fund okay go and see this lady she works in the greenhouse <laughs> on the long road right <laughs> uh, it's, it's 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 important uh, the bar. <laughs> To share those experiences, if you permit, <laughs> because um, so, okay, yeah, continue. The, the, there are those bite. people who are so talented. The trust matter is so key in this, and that value system that mm. needs to be embedded. My encouragement would be, in terms of objective, I think the entrepreneurship and the saving culture, and those two often go hand in hand. But obviously, a lot of research has got to go into this. And, and my, my take would be that um, for people who are taking this facility for support, mm -hmm. yeah, obviously, government has to think deeper. 
how are they going to repay so that they don't we don't end up creating more problems than we are trying to solve mm -hmm. but if they focus if there was a shift it could have two sides there could be that side that targets those who are going into business and another aspect of those who may be going into savings and the third aspect of those who just want to deal with the immediate cause of life a child is chased away because they don't have uniform and you need immediate remedy or, or you've going you've been going hungry for the past day or two and you just need to have something mm -hmm. so i think there needs to be provision for that but for me the most critical is we've started this the government is thinking about the very law of the law the very law that's very critical because we must find mm -hmm. a solution to them no matter how well people may be if the neighborhood is suffering then of course you can't be comfortable you can't be at home but i like what also jim was saying the aspect of technology is so key Mm -hmm. Because technology now allows you, you can monitor what people do um, daily. And I hope it's going to help inculcate that culture of accountability and transparency. This particular project I was talking about does that. Everything is captured on a portal. And uh, you can always see at the dashboard level, the managers, whatever is happening. And if need be, and as I was saying that as the project grows, if we get to the stage where you work now with Nyumbakumi, then, uh, then you can be sure it will also help us inculcate the trust, the honesty that we require even among our own people. I think there could be no better thing that was to happen to Kenya if our value systems, Article 10 of our constitutions would be embedded. Right. Maybe just uh, also latching on the take a, uh, take a bit of it, because uh, we've seen the if you have gotten your SMS, um, SIM card that is, not SMS, the same trend, if right. you've carried it within 90 days, then you're not uh, eligible for this particular fund. And if genuinely I've just opened my business and uh, I'm, I was hoping that I'll actually, mm -hmm. yeah, and up to that the is my essence. Is, right. is, isn't that prohibitive? Uh, why, why, what is really informing this? Is it because of uh, the nature of uh, how people have been misusing the, the SIM cards? We had the uh, registration of SIM cards uh, countywide. Why would that really apply? 90 days is, is uh, such no, a, I, yeah. I think it's short. It's very short. I, I, I think it it's should even be longer. Sorry, I, I think uh, 90 days is a good start. So you have to know somebody a little bit. He has to provide some information. Uh, I think 90 days is quite generous. Uh, no, in my view. you have but said the only requirement is you are a Kenyan and you are above 18. So why 90 days? Why 90 days? Oh, you see, those, those, those are broad. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It flies in the face I'm of what they are here. They are political parameters. Before the idea lands. When the idea lands, you find the terrain uh, is different. You know, some places are flat, others are, have valleys, you know. So how you land is, is different. And I think, uh, yes, uh, the pronouncement that you must, you only need to be 18, access to a number. A phone number, you must have an ID, I guess, they should have added. Uh, yeah, that, so, that is, of course. Yeah, yeah. but uh, uh, I think a bit of time to see how, how uh, if, say, if you're a quote-unquote crook uh, who has just acquired a SIM card to defraud people and so on and so forth, uh, and you throw it away, this, uh, people do that, they defraud on the SIM card, you throw it away and you go and get another one, and so on. So I hope they'll have, uh, of course, you can track it by the ID. Or, uh, but now you cannot just in, use in a, a, a broad brush te technology. The aspect, the, bar, mm, mm. the political side, of course, they leave to Aishimiwa's, mm. Aishimiwa to deal with and others. But the technology part, I am. I want to believe uh, and considering that there are very smart guys like Dr. Ndiu may have who are working on this program, who must have thought of some of this. There has to be regulations to go by. I'm sure not all of this came out yesterday. And the regulations could be one of them. That but one. you as a techie also you should give us a round and reason behind this. Uh, yeah, That's what I was coming to the bar. The aspect of uh, data science in this regard. I'm hoping that um, machine language and uh, artificial intelligence, those who are operating this system, will embed that so that you can also understand the, the, the culture of business and investment and savings and even spending money. Most people these days transact by M via M-Pesa. So there's so much we could learn from people, about people. Of course, without intruding in their privacy, because fortunately we now have data protection laws. So my thinking is that if government is going to use this also to know their citizens better without uh, infringing in their privacy, knowing their spending culture, 
it's helpful, but more so knowing also what needs and what services they buy. buy. So the aspect of data analysis and analytics is going to be very key, and I'm hoping it's going yeah, to Dr. be all Hashem, embedded. You know, on the integrity of the system, you right. know you're the IT guy. Sure. For example, the Auditor General needs to audit. This is public funds. Yes. You know, in the old days, um, what um, uh, Dr. Jim and others have taught us, McPhee and others, on how credit, how banks create credit, the right. basics in economics. Uh, here we have not banks, but um, a, a digital platform creating credit. Mm -hmm. uh, Auditor General needs to ensure accountability. He needs to audit. Sure. Um, is that money actually there being lent out? Uh, what are the chances that uh, some mm -hmm. tech um, guru can sit and create um, right. his own credit and start some bursary money to, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to others? Um, so I, I'm just yes. wondering, in terms of the integrity of this system, correct? What are the chances that this thing can actually be abused? Because sure. for me, the abuse is not about people borrowing and not paying, but mm -hmm. the, the, the risk that someone out there can set up the system, create a thousand ID cards, right, mm -hmm. and 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 collect fifty thousand yeah, thousand yeah. times. You raise yes. a very important but question because I, I think there was a, also a report regarding mm -hmm. also the cyber security and yeah, how right. the hackers mm -hmm. are they are walking away with millions, you yeah. know, from yeah. some of these uh, uh, farms. Just briefly on that, the ball, the issue of cyber security and information security generally is a major one. I don't think our financial institutions are reporting all that's happening. But the good thing is that... Of course, they, should, they could. Uh, they can't. People, of course. They'll uh, be bank yeah, runs and... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. there will be trouble. But the good thing is that for, uh, as, we, as we say in physics, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So there are safeguards. Uh, Kenya's got some of the best cybersecurity experts in the continent. We just need to take advantage of the manner of Kenyans who provide cybersecurity services for big banks in New York, for example. So, yes, as um, the Informatician Society of Kenya, which brings ICT professionals mm -hmm. together, I think they're more than happy mm -hmm. to work with the financial institutions. Yeah. But yes, the issue is when the system is being designed, the aspect of cybersecurity in this and abuse, mm -hmm. which is real, yeah. has got to be factored in. The good thing is that it's doable. Even though no system is 100% secure, mm -hmm. even the U.S. NASA systems can be cracked. Yeah. But um, you want to add what we call factors of nine. As long as you are 99.99% secure, it's fine. That's how we sustain MPESA. It's not that people don't abuse mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But the abuse is so minimal and manageable. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I was just lifting, uh, you know, the, the headline in the business uh, segment of the standard today uh, to Bill Okero that this alarm as local uh, cyber attacks rise 200 percent mm -hmm. to hit all-time high. Right. They're saying attacks detected in three months to September stood at 278 million, up from 92 in the previous quarter. System vulnerabilities, yeah. malware, and denial of service attacks were some of the most common. Tacit's adopted tactics, I should, uh, it should read, adopted by criminals. Uh, the Communications Authority of Kenya has warned that more Kenyans are falling victim to criminals online as cyber crimes cases in the country hit an all time high. So, this is being launched on this. And I remember uh, uh, a while back uh, also, uh, somebody hacked to on my phone, all right? Yeah. And you could load up uh, your, this is way back. Right. Sure. You could, yeah, so you, I can load up uh, some units on my phone. I wake up in the morning, I find it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> and yeah. then you go and see there's an activity that, uh, you know, somebody has been calling through my phone. Mm -hmm. And I wondered uh, how is that really happening? Mm -hmm. So even with this particular fund, I mean, where, where is the security yeah. of this if this is? And you're saying this is yeah. co very conservative? Yeah. That because they're not fully, like, uh, you know, giving the full reality of what is happening on cyber security and right now we know even some of these techies they're looking for uh forensic uh, audits sure. and uh, yeah and experts which is lacking in this country uh, start more i know as well you were you were about to launch uh, something on forensic uh, audits uh, within you know financial for, uh, forensic audits but you, you with this lack of lecturers you know, getting lecturers from india as well they prove to be very uh, expensive at the end of the day I don't know. Uh, you, you can, you can, you can you, uh, Sorry? You if, find some hackers. You, uh, yeah, uh, some hackers. The <laughs> if, if some you, know, you, know, you know what I was, talking, I was thinking? Because uh, right. uh, Jim, you were talking about uh, that particular woman that has this designing 
right. gift that uh, Bila will walk and he'll look at Bila. No, this no, this be. is a no no. <laughs> yeah, we can't, you know, uh, offer a credit facility to Bill. <laughs> and it reminds me of uh, 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 now. If you watch the movie, uh, Catch Me If You Can. That we had, uh, or, you know, Leo DiCaprio really playing the son of Abagnale. He, he, he had this gift of being a, a consummate con, you know, with very lucrative uh, salary, mm -hmm. held a big position. He was in his lifetime a pilot. Right. He was a consummate lawyer, you know, a con lawyer. He was a chief of staff actually in, in, in a hospital. And then he also was faking, you know, um, uh, checks until FBI caught up with him. They locked him up in jail, and they said, "Wait a minute, we have a gift. Mm -hmm. We have a gift in this guy. Why right. should we be actually locking him up? Yeah, because they used to go and get the <coughs> checks to you know to him, and you mm -hmm. tell him this is a fake one. Right, <laughs> this is a good one. Yes, that's right. <laughs> this is genuine. That's a genuine. And that's how the banks actually opened up the 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 um, check for department." Mm -hmm because of that particular gentleman. If we have a gift... <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, ethical. I've even lost my track of yeah, thought of what you were talking about there. Ethical. I'll just still on take yes. Ethical hackers. Hackers we call Eth those. Ethical hackers. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we need to take advantage of them. It's true. When you get hold of them, we need to figure out what are those unique skills and um, attributes that they have that we need to utilize. But in all this debal, the aspect of education public education is going to be so critical. Even as government rolls out this uh, Hustler Fund, there needs to be quite a bit more. And technology even has a role to play in that regard in terms of social media and so on. But in terms of cybersecurity, I'm surprised when we say there's a shortage, we can't get lecturers. Maybe this is another area where diasporas come in because we have them. Whether you go to Tesla and so on, you have Kenyans holding very high positions. And for now that December has started, a number of them are, uh, are around uh, for vacation. Yes. Why don't we utilize their resources? In international so, agency as well. Yes, so mm -hmm. cyber security is no rocket science, so to speak. In fact, I was uh, with a light touch while in um, Virginia, Washington, D.C. I gathered that uh, a Kenyan, uh, a young guy about 30 years old, owns a plane and shuttles people from one city of the U.S. to another. Uh, so when you are talking of uh, somebody owning planes, but this is a tech guy. There is so much that we could leverage, even in terms of cybersecurity. But even for our universities, I think those are areas where we need to train more. And I think government, I mm -hmm. think uh, without going to specific, of, there was talk of denial of service, malware, and so on, the various problems. I think uh, even as government, um, some state departments are training people. The last I checked, there were already about 5,000 cyber security experts trained in, in low level. I think they are absorbed in our system. So maybe uh, the communications authority needs to come out in this, work with professionals and experts, because there's no shortage. So yes, cyber security is a problem, but it's a problem we can confront and manage, keep to manageable levels. Lastly, just about a month ago, even my own wife, on a Sabbath, Saturday, we're in church, and then uh, the bank informs her that uh, text, uh, she gets a message a lot, saying your account has been debited with this amount, and she's in church. So fortunately, she was able to alert, there were, there were multiple Mm -hmm. uh, withdrawals within a span of just 30 minutes, about mm -hmm. five, six withdrawals. Mm -hmm. But somehow she was able to alert the banks. And uh, being a Saturday, it wasn't very it wasn't very easy, but the banks were able to recover all that money, meaning there are mechanisms to minimize uh, if there's a proper plan to contain cybersecurity. So mm -hmm. I want to reassure Kenyans, it's a problem, but it's not insurmountable. It's not insurmountable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bill, you, 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 some of these people that you've seen, the care who are hackers, uh, employees, and then they're taken to jail. We are talking about ethical hackers here. Can we convert them to ethical hackers <laughs> since they are gifted as well? Right. And they're looking for this particular <laughs> talent. You see, uh, the, these multinational companies, these big ones, they actually hire hackers mm. to test their systems. True. You actually engage a hacker, can you try and hack our system, and you get paid for it. Yeah. The idea is, it's what he calls the ethical, to test whether your system sure. is, mm. is, 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 is resilient. Is 
resilient and can sure. withstand that. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, for me, the, the, the issue is this is government, and you know, <laughs> so government accountability for government funds is different from what happens to the others uh -huh. uh, institutions, banks, and you know, these private companies have ways of dealing with their own. But government money, there is always because you are dealing with public servants. There is always that level of laxity. Uh, you know, you know, this is public money. So I, I, I I'm, 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 that's why I'm worried when government now goes into this level of technology, you know, similar to police, and then you really, and you have an audit who needs to check whether this money is actually being spent, whether actually the 50 billion has been, has been put out there in the loan. Mm -hmm. You know, you won't know out here, you would know that people have borrowed 500 billion, 600 billion, but you don't know how much is the actual amount of money uh, that has been put there. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's a lot of work, I think, for the for the for the for the for the auditor general's office to try and um, ensure that this this the integrity of this system, so that we don't lose money. Because um, we've always found people finding ways of getting into In the to, system to, into the system to get money from government. Mm -hmm. You know, Jamal, I think it's important to keep in mind that this whole thing of cybersecurity is a worldwide problem. Mm. True, and um, <clears throat> you know. Was it a year ago or possibly two years ago now when the Colonial Pipeline, which takes oil from uh, Texas up to the whole of the East Coast of the U.S., mm -hmm. that was closed down by Russian hackers. Now, these hackers <coughs> can be not only here in Kenya. <coughs> I don't know where Shem did his degree in uh, computer science, but um, they say that the, 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 the center of cybercrime in Kenya is Juja. And why is that the case? Juja. Georgia, yeah. Well, you know, uh, I don't know whether you know that JKU, <laughs> JKU act is actually... Uh, oh, right. you, you do, these, <laughs> these incredibly clever young men, right. they, come out, yeah. they come out of JKU, uh, they, right. they're, they're renting a room there, they can't get a job in Nairobi, they can't mm -hmm. get a job anywhere, so what do they do? They have to actually live. Right. And those people, you had a young man actually get into one of the big banks here in Kenya and transfer 200 million shillings. Mm -hmm. Now, he did that purely <laughs> to show the bank that their security was not good enough. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> the only problem is, if you have a really talented hacker, yeah. they will get into any system. Right. And the, the, the problem all the time is, you know, when is this going to happen, not if it's going to happen. And so, businesses today, today are told, look, you know, you've just got to be ready to lose money here. Now, you, you take all the possible precautions that you can take, but still you're going to, have, uh, you're going to be hacked. Mm -hmm. And now, because of big companies that, you know, uh, Bila was m m t telling us about, these people have p professionals trying to hack into their system. There's a person in the United States who earns more than a million dollars a year doing that particular job. And but the position there, okay, is that those big companies have fortified themselves against hackers, mm -hmm. so hackers now are going to the smaller people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, Shem was right. talking about his own wife, I don't know, right. he, he was, maybe he was thinking about someone else's wife, or, but anyway, <laughs> this was his own wife I know. Who, <laughs> who actually lost his money. And sure. Now that happens, that, that happens a lot, and some people, you know, his wife, thank goodness, was alert enough to realize, now wait a moment, right. my money is being stolen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she alerted the bank, because a lot right. of people, sure. they're not even aware. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. You know, they look at this thing, okay, what's this, you know? Maybe they've had <coughs> five Tuskers, so... She right. really, you know. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> you know, in light of that, even as we're winding up with the Hustler Fund, yeah. uh, we had yesterday in the Business Daily, uh, where they were looking at the FTX, uh, the collapsed U.S. crypto firm uh, in the U.S., right. putting billions uh, in three Kenyan firms. Uh, FTX invested in uh, BitPesa, Mara, and Cheap Cash. Tycoon used investors' billions to fund lavish lifestyle. And I was just also looking at the Washington Post, and uh, that was uh, the previous day there, where it says a crypto kingpin courted regulators. Mm -hmm. FTX had a FTX had championed mm -hmm. a plan to reshape his own market's oversight. And it says before his undoing this month, crypto magnate Sam Bank Manfred aggressively pursued powerful allies in Washington. None uh, was more important than Rostin uh, Benham, the chief of a federal agency that oversees the commodities markets. 
uh, Benham ben holds a strategic part among the nation's uh, financial regulators. And then Wall Street Journal said, crypto lender, uh, that is a block fine, fines for Chapter 11. Company plans to use bankruptcy to recover what it can from failed exchange of the FTX. And here, <coughs> they want to put billions in three Kenyan firms. And we've seen all this that is happening in right. the U.S. as well. Maybe just as we're winding up. Uh, yeah, if, uh, if you allow, Tibal, we're living in very exciting times in terms of digital money, currency. May probably colleagues have heard of this Lumi, an African digital fund. There is the Africa Diaspora Central Bank, recognized by African. There is a, a consortia, I think, kings and queens and of Africa, mm. cultural, traditional leaders. They're already doing... Uh, billions of dollars of transactions through the Lumi as a currency. Even within Kenya, there are wire pay, there is uh, lots of products coming up, tap, tap, send, and so on. A number of, of course, will be in show next week. But I should say that even within this regard, we have a consortium. I'm seeing a, quite a bit of tweet, the cybersecurity consortium with experts, including lawyers we have don't have many who have done cyber security laws both tech and law at the same time mm. my premise is i would want to encourage such people apart from in addition to Strathmore university that's mm -hmm. doing an excellent mm -hmm. job but also lies with the informatician society of kenya we have some of those top-notch cyber security experts that we should utilize as a country to secure just as our army and military is securing our territory these guys are capable of securing to the extent that's possible. Mm -hmm. And I would want to encourage our banks, and a number of the banks and financial institutions are already working with them. So in, in a nutshell, I would say there's no shortage. Just to answer Jim, um, as an alumni of uh, University of Nairobi, but of course UK, <laughs> York, and uh, U US, Unif University of California, Berkeley. So some of the best institutions in terms of this area that we are talking about. And we have lots of other products that are only waiting to be deployed. We haven't sufficiently utilized them. Mm -hmm. Let's give them an opportunity. Hopefully this is where the CBC review that's taking Indeed, place. This is, and I thank you for <laughs> oriented my thoughts to where I was going. Thank you. Uh, because I was holding a, a conversation with a gentleman just we met somewhere uh, uh, at a petrol station there. And uh, the daughter had passed right. with flying colors. Right. And she was, um, uh, I think, uh, selected to go and take medicine at the university. Right. But she she was declining. Uh, you see, she says, no, I don't want just to be uh, a doctor. I think I want to go to forensic audits, financial right. forensic audits. I sure. mean, this is where uh, a bill, I mean, Jim, where you actually uh, come in. Because now uh, School of Accountancy, there's a now new arena that is coming. They just right. don't need you to have a CPA. But they want you also to have, you know, uh, other tech. other tech, techie sure. issues because that's where... Every transaction is added to, you know, to the digital platform. So forensic audits side, how then are you sort of reconfiguring as a university? And even with the CBC and the coding that we know uh, is being introduced, it's really changing the way also careers will be chosen and how informing the young ones who are coming into the world of the digital platform. That is not just about CPA, but also it's about uh, the digital platform. You need to be conversant. It's a bit of coding. You can be a hacker, consummate hacker. This is what Google are looking for now that uh, they're coming into Africa. This is what IBM actually is looking for as well. Right. And this is what now you need to be teaching. I don't know. Well, you see, I, I think <clears throat> you can talk about the basics of protection. But, um, you know, if, if I wanted to become a hacker, I'd really have to become a very, very consummate computer Correct. programmer. Correct. And, you know, for... I know that, for example, I, every time I talk to the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya, I'm always telling them, look, get into IT. Because this is, you know, more and more systems are working on IT. A small business may still have paper records, but any bigger system is working all the time on a computer system. And so um, any auditor has got to actually know about that. My own experience, however, is that... <clears throat> You know, students are very, very lackadaisical these days. They don't really want to go anything beyond what is the absolute minimum. But, uh, but there are people, and you know, and this is why uh, there was a young man who actually became, he, he did a course in IT, he did a, a BBIT, but he also did the ACCA course at the same time. Mm -hmm. And he actually became a partner in KPMG. And he used to come along to 
uh, companies where he would be the person who looked at the IT system. The only thing is, well, he actually passed away, unfortunately, during COVID about a little bit more than a year ago. But that is the trend that is happening right across the world. Mm -hmm. Accountants have to be experts right. in, in IT. And the internal auditor in Safaricom, mm. he tells people, look, you've got to go out and learn Python. Python is a computer right. language. Mm. You know, some people say Ninoka. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it, it is a computer yeah. language. And, sure. and his, his mm. take is, look, you've got to be expert in that. And that's, you're, you're right, mm. you know. We've got to reorient. In fact, when one does um, the CPA, you actually do a little bit of forensic accounting. But to my mind, an insufficient amount. And I think, you know, IT has got to play, I feel, a much bigger part in the accounting curriculum than it does today. That's my own take. This right. is so key to me, if you allow. Hey, just let me hear from Abu Jessica. We'll come to you. And uh, we wind up with Bill Okero, then uh, at least we'll get your comment. Okay. I think I've said a lot about um, um, uh, this whole thing about IT and uh, technology and so on. The only thing I want to go back to uh, is, uh, is on the Hustler Fund in relating to this discussion, that the risks to the fund may not lie in the losses at the bottom with the 20 shilling borrowers, 2,000 shilling borrowers, it may also lie towards the top. We, have, we are almost invariably in our institutions. We are getting big heists mm. uh, occurring. So I just hope that, um, uh, and, and this will occur even with IT, because they, they are the same people who will override mm -hmm. the, uh, the IT instructions. And, and I just hope that we'll look out for it. It's quite sad the day we hear that billions have been stolen from a fund like this that would, could probably make a difference between life and death for the people that we are dealing with. Mm -hmm. The hardships are, are real. All right. Uh, let's hear from you, Dr. Tari. Uh, we'll, we'll I, mm -hmm. I wanted to mention the tech part is so key. Over the weekend, we had a Twitter space. Mm -hmm. But uh, as part of addressing the CBC review, there's a presidential team, which I think is handing in a report tomorrow. One of the things we did, we were gathering inputs from Kenyan senior professionals in Korea, in Germany, in Finland, in the US, in UK, sharing their experiences of what education systems they have. Mm -hmm. One thing that struck me for Germany, mm -hmm. they have taken closer look at IT. I know the stock of technology mm -hmm. and with a light touch, have always asked why is it that we don't treat our technology people well? Mm -hmm. I am reminded of a senior former University of Nairobi, Don, professor, engineering professor, who people say he moved from a university house to the grave. And then you say, this is top-notch engineer. Mm. How well should we have handled them? Uh, I, then somebody told us, well, first uh, post-independence uh, minister uh, once said that technical education is for failures. Yet the rest of the world, that's the direction we are moving towards. Mm -hmm. So my premise is that, and that conversation of curricular review continues on Twitter spaces, and I'd want to encourage more to participate, particularly those outside, to share experiences. What are other countries doing better that we can learn? One that struck me most, and I will end with this, is there is a European business university in Brussels, owned by a Kenyan, uh, Dr. Muli, with 15,000 students, 9,000 of them Kenyans, Kenyan students. It's such amazing, it's so unbelievable. Remember Brussels is where we have Professor Ndemo now, mm -hmm. as well as Ambassador, yeah. and quite fantastic work is happening there. But maybe we'll be talking more of this during the event next week. We want to engage more with our best brands, particularly in tech, in particular ICT, because really it undercuts, even though Jim talked about accounting, whether we talk of value addition in agribusiness or whatever else, robotics, and um, whatever other things you can think about, tech, IT is so critical that we need to mainstream it. Right. And the time is right. This is the time. And I encourage all of us also to join the Gumbaru sure. of uh, the CBC now that yeah. our coding is going to yeah. <laughs> the, the, the early primary schools as well. I've enrolled my, myself. I'll just begin with the class six. I have also a copy there of the pipe in the complete manual. This is the gnocca <laughs> <laughs> that, that we had uh, Dr. Oni talking, the essential 
handbook of python users starting coding today yeah so simply you can right. begin uh, <laughs> with, uh, that is uh, what was this gentleman that uh, 19 year one year old right. uh, uh, can you remember his name uh, the, the grade one uh, oh yes, that muse. Kimani Ma Maruge. Yeah, yes. uh, Kimani Maruge. The late, yeah, you can become the late Kimani yeah, Maruge. On. Yeah, who passed on. Uh, he had enrolled in I think class one at the age of ninety. No, yeah. no, he enrolled at eighty-four. Oh, it was yeah, eighty-four. He went all the way to grade seven. Maybe it, it was ninety-one, ninety. Yeah, to grade um, seven. Yeah. And yeah. It, it, the it, lights. Mm -hmm. it was that final exam which killed him. <laughs> 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 and the ball with the light touch. Talking of CBC, <laughs> there, there's those who talk of BBC as born before computers as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, that's Python for you. Of course, you can look up uh, in the internet for you to just uh, get acquainted with what Python is all about. Sure. But I want to just uh, interest uh, also Bill Okero because you've been uh, very particular intent, uh, especially on uh, what is happening with uh, with the dollars. Uh, and we had, where is this? Just, I just had it here and uh, I can't see it. The, the banking the sector mm. making the yeah. profit, uh, super normal profits mm. there as far mm. as uh, the dollar crisis is concerned, the dollar crunch. I'll just put it up. But you can just yeah, begin yeah. from there to, to tell us more. Yeah, we've seen the banks for the nine months, they made 52 billion, 52 on, billion. On, 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 the, on the foreign exchange. And, and it's, it's clear, I mean, there's they, they, they a dual uh, exchange market. Uh, what central bank, uh, you know, publishes is, is, is only for interbank or, mm. you know, but but in reality, in the banks, as, as businessmen, we are borrowing at 125, 126 and for most of this year. Mm. Um, and those banks have been buying at 118, 116, 120 now. Uh, and, and, and central bank is aware of this. And, uh, you know, you allow the banks to, uh, and it's part of the reason why many of the exporters decide to leave their money in, in dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, in their accounts, mm -hmm. because tomorrow when you want to buy it, you'll end up buying at 125. <laughs> so the banks have made huge amounts of money, um, and and this is not this is not fair. I, they, they, I've always said my problem with central bank, it doesn't matter which governor is there, is that they seem to focus on protection of the interests of banks only, mm -hmm. not the rest of the economy. This is why in this country, even when the economy is in recession, everyone else is you know all the blue chips companies have issued profit warnings, banks are making astronomical yes, profits. Yes, yes. In the nine months you've seen, just published uh, this week, mm. all the banks, some have made up to 36 billion, 33 mm. billion, 30 billion in nine months. Mm -hmm. and, and this is when the rest of the economy is it's, it's on the floor. Right. Uh, so, and, and this is because of the policies of the government. You know, and I've always said it is the policies of the government that make people rich or poor in this country. And, 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 and so this overprotection of banks, you know, look, giving them opportunity to, to, to lend mm. without any control to government. You know, for example, I would, if you look at any of the results being published this week, you'll find about 50% of their lending is to, uh, to treasury bills and bonds in the central bank. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the yield is now up to 15, up to 12, 13, 14%. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so it's crazy. <coughs> I mean, you, you, can't, you can't allow that. You can't allow that. I mean, of course, the government doesn't need to really do what it's doing in terms of, um, and, and, and Treasury, CS has just said last week that um, there's no more headroom for borrowing. But I think the, the, the fact is that central bank should review its policies really, in terms of enhancing the interests of other stakeholders in the economy. Because you cannot just look at the interests of the banks. And, 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 and I think this is unfortunate um, that this is happening. So, Dr. Jim, uh, has the, the regulator failed in this attempt uh, to try and regulate us uh, supporting <coughs> it? Well, I, I think the big problem here, you see, is that, let's face it, a parallel market exists. You know, people are not actually going through the banks. Well, well put it this way, um, the, the numbers, as, as Beto <coughs> rightly mentions, if you look at the, uh, the newspaper today, the, the mean rate is 122 shillings and 40 cents, but... Um, I know I was talking to someone yesterday, uh, they wanted to buy dollars, I think they're buying them at 128 shillings a, Correct. a dollar. Sure. So, 128 now. And, yeah. and wow. then also, you know, he also brings dollars into Kenya, and if he actually gives them to the bank, he'll get 120 shillings. So what do you do mm. in this case here, because that spread is so wide, True. and I think the spread is that wide because, um, well, this parallel market exists, how to eliminate that is incredibly difficult. 
the unfortunate thing is, you know, all the tea exporters, all the coffee exporters, all the flour exporters, you know, you're mentioning that what they're doing is they're holding their money abroad because, you know, they see the dollar is going up. If you're paid in euros, you try to get rid of those euros as quickly as you can because the euro even is falling more than the Kenya shilling against the dollar. But it's, it's, it's a very, very difficult thing. You know, we, we talk about the government trying to regulate uh, <clears throat> and obviously the arm of government here is the Central Bank of Kenya. And, you know, I, I must say I, I feel that, you know, many of our regulators don't really think sufficiently. Their, their one uh, idea is this thing of protection, follow the rule, uh, think outside the box. No, 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 no. The rule is in the prudential guideline or whatever <laughs> document it is. And people just, they, 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 they're not really thinking along with the market. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have friends in the Central Bank of Kenya. And when I say that the Central Bank of Kenya is over-regulating some of the things, um, they agree with me. So, you know, the situation here, I think, is that we've got to have a much more business savvy group of regulators who know what business is all about and you know not a person who's been you know let me say in the IMF or something of that nature well you know the IMF this is this is God no it's mm -hmm. you know have you actually worked in a bank you know do you know what banking is all about how do you get over the problems that you know the excessive pr uh, profits of, of the banks as Bill was mentioning is incredible it's incredible. And, um, you know, Bamburi <coughs> has uh, issued a, a profit, a profit warning. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as Beno mm -hmm. said, a whole lot of companies are issuing, even the NSC itself is issuing a profit warning, the Nairobi Securities Exchange. And yet, you know, the banks are making this money. And they're making <coughs> that money from <coughs> Kenyans. I think it's important to keep in mind that, you know, it is Tom, Dick, and Owino in Kenya who's borrowing money or who is buying dollars to import goods or whatever it is. And this, you know, the, the amount of money that made there, is it for the good of Kenya? I don't think so. But that's my own view. Mm -hmm. I feel that right. mine just yeah. very difficult to, to, to moderate that. Can, can we hear from you? Bunyasi will come to you. Uh, yes, I think this is a very interesting subject. It's been a challenge for many years, uh, particularly, for example, during periods in which there were requirements for sector allocation of resources by banks and so on. And uh, at the same time, government had a big appetite for funds. So when they float uh, uh, bonds or, uh, or even sell their, their, uh, the paper that uh, 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 Central Bank uh, discounts from for government, the banks can easily put money, put the money there and make the profit. They don't have to lend out to, uh, to the sector. Uh, and I think it's, it's an ongoing problem. I just don't know how you really get a handle of that because it's not illegal. It just has certain consequences that are not desirable. And in my view, I think the interaction between the Central Bank of Kenya and other institutions that work in a <coughs> similar space, uh, starting with the Treasury, maybe be not, be, maybe para government think tanks and so on, maybe maybe uh, industry institutions, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, the export um, uh, type forums and so on, mm -hmm. are not putting enough pressure on the central bank as for how uh, their policies are <coughs> impacting the real sectors in which they, they work. I think they do put, I think they do put, uh, they don't want to under understate that at all. But the consequence of it is that there's still a big loophole. Uh, all that the bank has to do to make the, the money, like they did over COVID. They, it's amazing what profit levels they made during that COVID period. The economy was going down, but they were making, you know, more. I mean, it's almost embarrassing for them to publish their results, I think. Uh, <laughs> While people are suffering less and that, yeah. you know. But, but yet it's still, it's still, it's still legal. Yeah, but there are aspects then of uh, economic management system that I think we need to look at carefully. Mm -hmm. Right. The, the Balmwishmua talked of all the major stakeholders in this regard, except one which is probably the most important, the diasporas. Mm -hmm. Because if we're talking of this forex, the four billion that comes into our economy, the that is from... Yes is the diaspora, mm. And uh, I'll be a little softer on the banks. Uh, obviously, business is like willing buyer, willing seller. But obviously, it's got to be incumbent upon the regulator.
to have regulations and guidelines that cushion the spread obviously is an issue of concern but i think it's a conversation the banks need to have with the diasporas and a number of tier one tier two are already doing that i'm very excited about a new uh, cs of national treasury professor jugun and and we're already in conversations hopefully going forward at the right time uh, we could look at even things that Nigeria has done. About two years ago, they had a, di a di diaspora bond that oversubscribed three times. They raised $380 billion. But of course, Kenya, no in the past has tried this, but was done the wrong way. It was assumed the bureaucrats thought this is going to work for the diasporas without public participation involving them. So hopefully, um, again, with the new regime, they're, if they are, I'm hoping they're going to be given a free hand to practice. But Clearly, we must improve on the regulation, and clearly, we must involve the shoe wearers, particularly the diasporas. If there is a little margin, let it also benefit those who bring into the money into the economy, so that there can be an incentive to bring more. As we, as I said earlier on, only five ten percent is coming in. Mm -hmm. You can imagine if we unlock the other remaining, we would be talking of. Uh, 40 billion dollars that's like four trillion shillings like our annual national budget so this money could come in if we raise let's say a red carpet for the diasporas and and secure their investments mm -hmm. but you, do, you, can, you don't do that yes. unless you grow the economy yeah, yeah. unless yeah, yeah uh, the growth is robust sure. otherwise you know, uh, that's yeah. the best red carpet for the uh, diaspora uh, uh, thank you know, let's hear from below let me just clarify you know the the we have engaged uh, the, 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 the various stakeholders, SCAPSA, CAM, and others, the central bank, including bankers. And, 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 and it's about the leadership of central bank with, with respect, I think, where we've had this problem. Um, because central bank has been playing second fiddle to government interest only. And, and, and part of the reasons why the government, the central bank has insisted on this pricing mechanism that it has developed, because this is where the problem is, because they have fixed a price. In essence, they are controlling the exchange rate, saying you must be at 16, you must be at 19, you must be at 20. That, that, that is to protect the government in terms of its payment of the external loans. Mm -hmm. Because then every <coughs> extra shilling, you know, you'll end up another 40 billion shillings will be added to the, to the amount that they have to pay. So, so, then, uh, so the problem is not that the others have not engaged. They're really engaged and, and, and it is, you know, you've seen publicly the CBK governor coming out a few months ago saying, you know, telling um, the manufacturers and others to go to hell. I mean, what are you talking about? There's nothing called parallel market, and everyone's selling it, but this is what we're buying at from the bank. And what you're buying at from the bank is not something hidden. You go to the bank and they sell you at 128 sure. in broad daylight. Mm. So, um, and, and the central bank says, no, the rate is 122. <laughs> uh, you know, you can't, and the bank is told you can't buy from his clients, mm. uh, the diaspora, mm. at more than 120. Uh, and, and, and so you're benefiting the banks directly. Uh, this is this is so it should let uh, it should change the, the it's about the policy on the private pricing mechanism is done by the central yeah. bank allow me to just the same it. central mm -hmm. bank that has allowed government to borrow <clears throat> you've seen uh, the overdraft the oh, it's gone over 67 billion we were told the other day over 60 yeah it's like a printing money the government has no money it's broke and central bank selling they collect money to go and spend you know it's so we have a problem with central bank. Yeah. Oh, okay, we want to take a short break. When we circle back, of course, uh, we look at uh, the issue of uh, the president saying that we'll be never gazing here, uh, borrowing from within. And this is where we have this situation of supernormal profits for the banks as well. Uh, we had uh, him, he was in South Korea. We got at least $2 billion from the South Korean government. He's looking east and west uh, in terms of support. He's speaking also uh, to his line of um, advancing his campaigns with that we will not be externally borrowing but now we can see he's doing that at the end of the day but even more importantly is what is on the front page of the business daily not today uh, but we shall look at today's as well a big topic but on monday it was talking about what we were talking with bill uh jim here i should say only nine percent of kenyans have permanent full-time jobs and uh, this is uh a story there that says less than 10% of Kenyan adults have permanent full-time jobs, underscoring the high poverty and dependency levels in an economy where the government is struggling to tackle an acute unemployment problem. The average share of workers in permanent full-time jobs stood at 9% last year. This is according to the, a survey a part conducted by Central Bank of Kenya, which 
list Garissa, Wajia, Tukana, and Kwale as counties with the smallest proportion of quality employment. We'll take a short break. Don't go away.